everybody, this is Praxis, and in this video I want to talk about two things. One relates to this door over here, in fact all the interior doors, and the other relates to what's below us. Uh, we're in the library right now, uh, but below this room, in this area, are what I refer to as the hot room, the room that gets the heat that's vented out from the pantry, which is over here. Uh, the wall between the two rooms is right here, right underneath this floor joist. Uh, and it's working really well right now. Uh, before, uh, I installed the final fan, which is a six inch fan, which is over here. You could really tell when you're up here, you put your bare foot or your hand here, you could feel it's cool. You do the same over here, you could feel that it was warm. This room was get just, it was staying too hot. And the heat, the hot air was actually an asset. I have a four inch fan over here, like I mentioned, and it was blowing that hot air down below the bathroom over to uh, my right over here. And it was helping to keep, uh, what I was thinking was probably going to be kind of a cool, uh, dark, you know, moist corner dryer. Uh, so I was taking this waste product and using it as an asset, but there was just too much waste product and this room was not getting cool enough. Uh, the air conditioning unit is trying to grab heat from the pantry and pull it uh, to this side, exhaust it over here. But if the cooling coils are in a room that is... Uh, well, the heat exhaust coils, I should say, is in a room that's really hot and you're blowing it, hot air over the hot coils. It's not going to cool them down that well and the air conditioner is not going to run that efficiently. It's going to use more electricity. It's just going to be wasteful. So I added a six inch fan over here. It blows the air out a window, a small basement window in the back there, and it makes it work really, really well. Now, this is summertime, so we want to get rid of that heat. We don't want that extra heat. Come winter, we're not going to be wanting to be uh, venting that heat outside. We're going to want to keep it inside. Um, but in the wintertime, I don't know if there is going to be a lot of excessive heat because the pantry may not have to be air conditioned as much in the winter. The whole back wall is going to be much cooler, uh, so uh, you know, the air conditioner may not kick on very frequently at all. And if the air conditioner doesn't need to run that much to keep the pantry cool, then this 4-inch fan over here might be totally sufficient to keep it, uh, this whole hot room not that hot. So I'm just going to see how it goes. And that's the way it is when you're doing something a little bit new. Uh, you know, sometimes you kind of have to experiment and see how it goes and, uh, you know, just adapt as you go through it. Um, it's, you know, it's just the nature of the situation. I, I have never been used to using uh, this type of solar hot water heater that just vents a lot of heat because of the piping and everything going into it. That was a bit of a curveball. It's taken me a little bit to learn about it. That's why I share these videos with you guys. So if you guys are ever doing something like this of your own and you're going to put in a solar hot water heater that grabs hot water from solar panels on your roof, you should know it's probably going to be venting a lot of heat and maybe you don't want to put it in the room of the house that needs to be the coolest, which is the pantry. So, you know, we all learn from each other and we learn from experience. Another thing that I'm learning from someone else, and this is a viewer of the, uh, this channel, uh, they're a Patreon supporter, and I was talking with her recently, and she mentioned something about these. And honest to God, is something that I should have known. I think I've, people have mentioned this to me before uh, on other topics, and even I myself, uh, in this series at the beginning, I mentioned something related to this. Uh, and it relates to the fact that if you cover up wood, and the rest of the wood's getting sunlight, the rest of the wood kind of tans a little bit. Uh, you know, the, the more you leave wood out in the sun, it, it kind of gets more of like an ambery kind of color. Uh, and if it's covered up, it, it doesn't. It, well, it's like this, right there. You know, the, I, I'm two different races with myself right there. So the same thing can happen to wood, and it's a good idea to remove this stuff. So uh, she mentioned I should get these things out of here. The reason I haven't actually unwrapped the door is I haven't finished them yet. I haven't sealed them, and I figured, well, I'll just you know, do that when I do that. But I don't want to make suntans on my door, so I'm going to be going through the house removing all of these things from all the doors. Uh, the other time when I mentioned it actually at the beginning of the season, because uh, again, this is not news to me, it's just I kind of forgot to do it there, um, is uh, when I had a bunch of stacks of boards, uh, you know, all these guys, you know, the floorboards, the wall boards, everything. Uh, when they were sitting in stacks in the sun, if you have two boards right on top of each other, you know, the top one shades the bottom one. If the top one slides off, it makes kind of a shadow mark. And if they're sitting out in the, you know, the hard sun, you really, really see it. So I remember even in the series, I mentioned to people, make sure you don't do that kind of thing. You can get weird marks on your boards. And the same thing applies to interior doors. So thank you very much, viewer who does not want to be named. But thank you for mentioning that. You saved my doors. I, otherwise, I, I, I don't know. I'd probably be like in there with a paintbrush trying to like match it later. <laughs> That's it. Thanks for watching.